In this episode of Roma Custom Bike, we'll put back together the engine after reconditioning it. Hi everybody, this is Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and in this episode we'll put back together the engine after reconditioning it. Stay tuned because we have quite an explosive surprise at the end of this episode. As you can see, we have prepared everything you need for the job. All the parts, new gasket and most important of all, the shop manual where you'll find all the info about torquing patterns for tightening the bolts. Luca is also back with us. Ciao a tutti! To make sure I don't mess anything up during the process. Let me tell you, this is quite a special episode as it goes way beyond the regular format of 12 minutes. But once we edited all the footage we had, we ended up with more than one hour and a half of material. So this is actually the short version of what happened. But for those of you that might want to try this process themselves, I'll be posting the full version divided in single procedure for your convenience. So, let's get down to it. We started by removing the tappet guides to replace the gaskets. Since we have the engine apart, it's best to tackle as much as we can while it's easy. After 20 years, they're quite stuck, but with the help of our trusty persuader, we got them out. Some residue of the old gasket is still sticking to the crankcase, so I use a blade to get it cleaned up. You have to proceed with extreme caution not to damage the face of the crankcase. Anyway, we cleaned up the guide seat and replaced the gasket before reassembling. Here is a detail of the insertion of the guide with the tappets inside. Come va, ragazzi? Ciao, oh, Yamus. Bella, yeah. Ciao, sta bene? Serve la mano? Sì, sì, dai, date da fare, va, che io mi fumo un sigaro. Eh, eh. Immediatamente reclutato. For an educational look at this procedure, let's hear from our Tappet senior correspondent, Polsky Rage. Le putterie sono montate qua. Sì. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Polski for this invaluable insight, but let's get back to it. Okay, so I opened my Viseco pistons and uh, they come in these little jeweler pochettes, let's say, and they are gorgeous. They come with everything you need, all the rings you need, they're all labeled as you can see, top groove, second groove, third groove and I borrowed a few tools to do this like uh, this uh, ring expander or the contrary of that actually so these are pretty cool to constrain the rings to the piston and uh, slide them right in nice and oiled and so we're gonna proceed assembling the pistons and then putting them on the engine so let's do that the spiral steel rails have to have their gaps not aligned. So I have the bottom uh, gap right here, the middle gap is right there, and the last one is up here so they don't align together. And there is kind of a continuous ring and the gaps are at different points. This is one of those infos that you can find in the shop manual. Very easy to overlook, especially for an amateur such as myself. Inserting the pins in the pistons is pretty easy with a little coating of engine oil, but a bit of finagling is required for inserting the clips. All good until now, but installing the cylinders with the automatic ring compressor I borrowed is quite difficult because it's much taller than the one I should have used. Alright, so the space we have to work with is already tight, so placing the rear cylinder in place it's like playing Tetris because of the frame. But still, this was the easy part. Ah, ouch, excuse me. Sliding it down was a nightmare. 
io te lo tengo spinto in su e tu spingi il pistone in giù so you should slide the piston while sliding the compressor down without letting go of the rings before they're inside the cylinder does that make sense? alza il cilindro ok ci sta spingi so che non è facile perché devi anche azzeccare le viti no, è uscita la fascia è uscita la fascia te la riprendi, non fa niente sometimes you just need to release some tension it took us almost an hour but in the end we made it That was tough, man. It was uh, delicate work and uh, just not something you want to do every day. But anyway, we got to put the pistons, the cylinders at their place and now we can proceed with the heads. It's been tough. So we're gonna proceed with the two O-rings and the gasket. We have already done it on the, the other cylinder. We proceed with placing these and as you can see these ones have already been done so this is when the manual really comes into play here it tells you all the torque um, you need to respect when tightening the bolts with a torque wrench which we have right here and the crisscross patterns that you need the, to use to tighten the head bolts so following this religiously we're gonna put the heads and torque them down It's imperative to follow the crisscross pattern specified in the manual when tightening the head bolts to avoid damaging the freshly reconditioned surface. Also, we're going to use the torque wrench to use just the right amount of force. Arrivi a battuta risali su di due giri. Ok. When the torque wrench clicks, it means we've reached the specified torque. Now we're gonna wait 15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes before doing the second and then wait, do the third until we reach the final torquing for these bolts. That is so to let the uh, gaskets actually adjust to the contour of the cylinders, the heads and all the planes. So this is the morning after. Uh, last night got pretty late, but it was actually good because all the gaskets had the time to settle in position and we're proceeding with the last one quarter turn uh, as specified on the manual. What we have done is mark each and every bolt and now we're gonna proceed with giving this uh, last one quarter. So Luca, please go ahead. Okay, the other side, following the crisscross pattern. The heads are tight. All right, it's now push rod time. These are the original ones I've removed from the engine, but the manual says that if you get your valve seats reconditioned or the heads reconditioned, you need to bring them to a Harley Davidson dealer to get them adjusted or something. I don't know what that is. They don't specify, so I went on and got myself a kit of Colony adjustable push rods. And they come with a kit that makes your tappet rigid. We're not gonna use those we're just gonna use the adjustable push rods as you can see right here um, nowhere on the colony machine website um, was specified how many threads per inch these threads are right here that will need them to adjust them so what I did I measured how many faces uh, which is pretty much a six of a turn will take to get this uh, adjustable push rod to extend 
to 100 thousandths of an inch which is what we need to extend them once once we reach that zero lash point so um, that's what I've measured the colony takes about 10 faces or one full turn and then four faces and uh, we're gonna proceed with the installation now the zero lash point is where the push rod is extended just enough to touch both the top and the bottom and have a little drag when trying to spin it but first we need to install the push rod covers before we can start adjusting the push rods we need to install the rocker box and we're following the specs in the manual for tightening the screws as well Okay, we have brought the length of the push rod to zero lash. Uh, so, as you can see, there is a little bit of drag when we're trying to spin it. We make sure on the top is in the right spot and on the bottom is in the right spot. So now we're gonna have to spin this bolt 10 faces, which is what we've cal calculated earlier. So now I'm gonna hold this with the top wrench and Luca is gonna spin this 10 faces. Before that, we're gonna mark it with a little marker. Do you have any idea of how hard it is to find the marker when you need it? I mean, really? Questo, no? A crucetta. We mark the X in the starting phase so that we have a reference to help us count the 10 faces we need. Sì. Fagli fare un giro pieno e poi altre quattro faccette. Questo è un giro pieno. Sì. Una. Una. Tre. Due. Tre. Tre. E quattro. E quattro. Yeah! We can count to four! In Italia! Freaking geniuses we are! Yes! Now we can tighten the lock nut, repeat for the other three push rods, and install the covers. Sounds uh, easy enough, right? Four screws, you say, what could go wrong? Well, one of the screws needs to be put in through a hole in the frame. Of course, the freaking screws falls into the freaking hole. And after a gathering of our brilliant minds, we decide to tilt the bike to try to get the screw out. Well, the jack slides right underneath us, hitting the forks to the ground. With the help of Alfredo, which is usually behind the camera, we manage to pull the bike back up. Just that day, just that. Woo! And on this bombshell, we're gonna take a motherfucking break. Woo! I have to say, though, the whole process went way better than expected. So much better, in fact, that Mother Nature decides to pour down some ridiculous amount of water just to keep things interesting, you know? But who cares? We've got to put back the push rod covers. All right, this seems easy, but they thought us every step of the way. Thanks to the miracle of post-production, you get to see the easy version. But don't forget to check out the extended version for a bunch of tips and tricks to tackle all the problems we've found on our way. All right, so we cannot start the bike yet. The engine is done, but we still have to install the oil bag and the gas tank. So I guess that for this episode, that's it. Quindi adesso noi abbiamo del tempo e possiamo andarci a divertire. Have some party. Holy shit, man! That's awesome! I told you we had an explosive surprise! 
I guess it's come the time to go unload some of the tension of this build in the shooting range. We're here at the shooting range with Luca and Christian and they're actually gonna teach me how to shoot. Can you believe that? <laughs> Sparo da tre anni, un divertimento, una passione anzitutto per le armi, per la tecnica e un divertimento si passano belle giornate con gli amici, è tutto molto semplice, diverso dal mito del Rambo che spara a tutti e tutto quello che si muove, è una cosa molto simpatica. Allora, abbiamo visto il nostro allievo si è comportato molto bene, nonostante la sua, fosse la sua prima esperienza con le armi. Ha centrato subito il bersaglio, ha trovato la sua linea di mira. Uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci, undici, tredici, quattordici e quindici. Mi è andato bene, deve ancora sciogliersi un pochettino, ancora un po' rigido sulle gambe, però promette bene il ragazzo. È nato per sparare probabilmente e non lo sa. Dopo il lavoro sul motore, dopo tanta fatica, oggi siamo venuti qui a divertirci. Dunque io sparo dal 78, andavo a sparare con mio padre al poligono di Lord di e poi in tanti altri posti. Cesare oggi ha sparato molto bene, e ha centrato il bersaglio dove doveva centrarlo e mi ha veramente sorpreso, complimenti. Wow! Che pezza! Che pezza! Questo è il 44 Magnum. Wow! That was fun! I got to shoot a 70 years old gun a Glock, a 357 Magnum, and the queen of all gun, the 44 Magnum. But most importantly, we got to reassemble the engine, bringing me a step closer to my next long-awaited ride. I'd like to remind you again that we'll be posting the extended version of this episode soon, and to visit our English Facebook page, where we post every day. I'd also like to invite you to support the show, commenting, subscribing to the channel, liking the episode, and if you really, really liked it, why not? <laughs> Tell your friends. Now we also have the custom chess t-shirt available for purchasing in our site. Looking slick while spreading the word. Now, how can you say no to that? So that's it for now. I am Custom Chess, and I'll see you in the next episode of Roma Custom Bike. Thank <laughs> you.